17 of New Zealand's largest retail chains have now been accused of forcing their employees to work part of their day without pay. Collectively, we're talking tens of thousands of employees and potentially millions of dollars in unpaid wages. After Smith City was told by the Employment Court on Friday to back pay its employees for six years of unpaid daily 15-minute morning meetings, we've been inundated with texts and emails from listeners saying the same thing is or has happened to them. Unions have received thousands of complaints. The government's received hundreds. Both are warning retailers they'll investigate all of them. We have been following up your texts and going to the companies that you have named most often. Tonight, we have a story of a woman who was effectively fired for speaking out against the practice. Forced to go to morning meetings unpaid at Bunnings Warehouse, she objected and stopped getting work. We continue Zach Fleming's series on underpay in the workplace, and Zach's been working with visual journalist Nick Monroe. Lowest prices are just the beginning. And the end for one Bunnings Warehouse employee was stress, anxiety and despair. I started not getting as many offers of shifts, and then I just got no offers, and then I resigned. All because she simply asked to get paid for the work she was doing. We aren't naming her, but she worked at two Bunnings Warehouse stores, leaving at the beginning of this year. She tried to push back against unpaid morning meetings. I was told that if I didn't show up for morning meetings, uh, my contract would be terminated because it showed I wasn't on board. Um, and she said that coming in early showed that you were committed and um, that commitment was sort of indicative of, you know, <laughs> um, your attitude and also would, like, affect how, how many shifts you got because I was on a casual contract at that point. So, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but w would you say that you felt like that was a threat, come into the morning meeting or else? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, I mean essentially it was a threat and the threat got carried through. Her work dried up, so she moved to a different Bunnings warehouse. There, she was paid for the morning meeting, but not paid for her evening cash up. The store would officially close at six, but often there'd be customers still in the store and I couldn't start cashing up until all the customers had left. I wouldn't finish until 6.30, um, sometimes later, and I wasn't paid for that. And, um, and what I started doing was I started changing my timesheet you know, saying, noting it and saying, I got out at 6.30 because of late cash up. And, but that wasn't reflected on my payslip. Bunnings Warehouse declined to be interviewed, but in a statement it said it expects staff to be paid for all meetings and cash up and will investigate any claims that arise. The retail sector right across New Zealand is getting millions of dollars in free labour every year. Cheating a minimum wage worker out of at least 15 minutes work a day through compulsory unpaid meetings or cash up equates to $800 a year. And so far the list of businesses accused of doing that is long. First Union says it's received hundreds of complaints from employees from Smith City, Spotlight, Briscoe's, Hannah's, Rebel Sport, The Warehouse, Countdown, Pack and Save, Cotton On, Noel Leeming, Harvey Norman, Farmers, Kmart, Whitkills and Warehouse Stationery. And checkpoints heard from more than 100 workers from dozens of other businesses too. We've had about 1,500 respondents to our survey. Tali Williams from First Union says their 0800 number's been ringing off the hook. The line has been drawn in the sand now that employers um, you know, can't hide from the fact that they must pay their, their workers for all hours worked um, and not to try to make people come in to work for free. Um, it's now been established that's clearly illegal um, and, and we will pursue those cases. And so will the government. Labour Inspectorate Regional Manager Stu Lumsden says their 0800 numbers seen a 15% rise in complaints this week. We'll then try and group them into industries or employers and then we'll be going out um, once we have that information to those uh, industries and employers uh, to try and get them to rectify uh, the issue. If at the end of that we've still got employers who are not compliant, we will be visiting them. Workplace Relations Minister Ian Lees Galloway says he's committed to doubling the number of labour inspectors to 110 to try and keep businesses honest. After the budget's released tomorrow, we'll know how many will come in its first year.
And the other thing I'd say to the workers in this situation is this is exactly what unions are for. I don't think this situation would have been allowed to carry on for as long as it has if more of the workforce had been unionised. So it's a good example of why being a member of a union uh, can be very, very helpful to a lot of workers. The Bunnings warehouse worker you heard from wasn't in a union. After she tried but failed to be paid for cash up, she dropped it. You're immediately made aware that you're not important and that you're so easily replaceable and that can be very depressing. First Union says it will continue to name and shame companies in the coming days. For Checkpoint, Zach Fleming.